to what the shell means. The Unix operating system is simply a multi-user or a multitasking operating system. It was developed by a team led by Dennis Ritchie and Gert Thompson. The Unix operating system features a hierarchical file system. Think about it like the tree system. A tree has a root and then goes up and then we have the branches. This is how the Linux operating system is. There is a root and then there are several branches. So it operates in a hierarchical system. Files and directories are organized into a tree-like structure with a root directory at the very top. Now, one very important thing you have to know about the Unix operating system is that it is known for its powerful command line interface, which allows you to interact with the operating system with text. This is what this means. You realize that when you open your terminal, there is this black box that pops up and then you have to enter text commands and feed it into the operating system of the computer and then the computer executes those commands that you are feeding into the operating system. That black box that you see is what is called the terminal or the shell. There are various kinds of shell. There is a bash shell, there is a Z shell, there is a K shell, many other kinds of shell. But usually what we see and use is a bash shell. So what you see is known as the command line interface. This is in contrast to the graphic user interface where you can click on folders and files. What many people are used to is the graphic user interface. So if you want to create a folder, all you have to do is to right click, create a folder, and if you want to create a folder within that folder, you right click, move the mouse around. But that is not how the command line works. If you want to create a folder using the command line, you have to use text-based commands. This is very important. As you progress in your software engineering journey, you will realize how powerful the command line interface is. There are some tasks that you have to execute that you may not be able to use a graphic user interface for. The command line is powerful and can execute tasks that will take you hours to do with the graphic user interface. So as you progress in your journey, you want to make sure you understand the use of the command line. Now with that said, let us understand what shell permission is. Shell permission or file permission is an important component of the Unix or Linux operating system that provides a very secure method of storing files. Now think about it this way. In the early days when computers were invented, several users were using the same computer, which was probably standing in one huge room. File permission was so important because the system had to be structured such that one user was not gonna crash the entire system or one user could not access the file of another user. So if you have a file or a directory or a folder in the computer system, users were assigned different roles to that file. So let's say I have a file stored in my computer. That file will have an owner and that owner can decide to give other users various roles. So there were three major roles that you can have when it comes to file permissions. There is a owner, there is a group, and then there are others. There is a owner, there is a group, and then there are others. These three groups are what determine the entire scope of shell permissions. Now watch this. The command to list out files in a shell is ls. However, if you want to list out files to see the shell permissions, you have to use the command ls-l. This is going to list out the files in a long format. Let me explain something to you here. What you see over here in this first column represents the file permissions. Now in a minute, you are going to understand what this means. To do that, let us go into the resources that were given us in the internet. Let us examine this very carefully. You realize that, like I told you, the first column over here represents the file permissions. The second over here represents the owner. The third represents the group. The fourth represents the file size. The fifth represents the modification type. And the final represents the file name. So I'm going to go back into my terminal and then let's examine that. I have several files in here. Let's ex examine the last one. Realize that these represent the file permission. This is the user, the owner of the file. This represents the group. This represents the file size. And this represents the modification type. Then this represents the name of the file. Now, one more very important thing you need to note is that whenever you see the file permissions and it begins with a D, it means that it is a directory, it is a folder. When it begins with a dash, it means that it is a file. So it means that this over here, web projects, is a folder. And this over here, package.json, is a file. As you can see, just by taking a glance at, at this, you can tell which ones are files and which ones are folders. So having understood that, 
the next thing you need to take note of is a classification of the file permissions. Now you want to pay attention here. The file permission are in groups of three. Now we understand that the first letter determines whether it's a folder or a file, and this is a folder, a directory. Now the next thing you want to take note of that is that the file permission are in groups of three. So we have the first three sets, which is RWX. I'll tell you what that means in a moment. And we have the next three sets, then the final three sets. Now, the first three sets represent the permissions for the user or the owner of the file. The second three represents the permissions for the group. The final three represents the permissions for others. Now, let us understand what this RWX means. For each classification, the R means read, the W means write, and the X means execute. So, each classification, which is the user, the group or others would have the permissions of read, write or execute, read, write or execute. Still considering the final folder, realize that with this one, the user has read, write and execute permissions. He has all the permissions. Then with the group, the group has the read permissions. They do not have the write permissions represented by the dash. And then they have execute permissions. Then others also have a read permission they do not have the right permission and they have execute permission. Now, what do these things mean? The one with the read permission can view the contents of the file. The one with the right permission can edit the contents of the file. He can modify, which means that he can write into it or delete the file. He can modify the contents of the file. Then the one with the execute permission can actually run the file as a program, meaning that the user has all permissions. He can read, modify the file, or execute the file as a program. But the group, which is the next set of three, they have the read permission. They can read the file, but they cannot write, which means that they cannot modify this folder. Then they can also run it as a script file. Now, others also can read, they cannot write, and they can execute. Now, if that is well understood, let us see how to change the permissions of a file or a folder. We want to change the permissions of the user. You want to change the permissions of the group. You want to change the permissions of others. What command do you use to change permissions? Now to do that, let us visit the resources that we were given. If you read through, it brings you here. You realize that chmod modifies the file access rights. If you use the command su, you can temporarily make someone the super user. If you use the command sudo, you can temporarily become the super user. If you use the command chon or chown, you change the file ownership. And if you use the command chgrp, which means change group, you change a file's group ownership. These are very essential. You want to take note of them and write them down. Now, to change the permissions of the user, group, or others, there are two main ways by which you can do it. You can either use the symbolic mode or the absolute mode. The symbolic mode or the absolute mode. Now, take note of this notation. This represents the symbolic mode. I'm going to explain it right now. Pay particular attention. Take particular note of this notation. If you want to change the permissions or the file access rights, the command to you, the command to use is chmod. You want to write this notation down because you are going to be using it a lot. When you enter the command chmod, it indicates the options. We'll see what that means in a moment. Then the next thing you want to indicate is either the user. If you are going to change the permissions of the user, you. If you want to change the permissions of the group. G. If you want to change the permissions of others, it's O. And if you want to change the permissions of all at a time, it's A. Then now you come to the arithmetic symbol. It's either you want to add, remove, or equal. So if I do, let's say, change mode, new, plus, then now I'm going to indicate the permission over here, which you will understand in a moment. Then you'll bring the file name. I'm going over that again. So you change mode, either the user, the group, others, or all. Then you are either going to add permissions or remove permissions. Or in the case I want permission equals the other. When you are done, then you indicate the kinds of permissions you want to create over here. Then you bring the file name that you are changing the permissions for. Let's go and see practically how this works. Now, let us find out how to implement this practically. Let me just clear my screen. Then I'm going to list out the files in this directory in the long format, which is ls-l. And we enter. Let's manipulate the permissions of this folder called web projects. Now, we know that it is a folder because it begins with a D. Remember, I said when it begins with a D, it's a directory. When it begins with a dash, it's a file. Now, the first three sets of permissions belongs to the user. The second 
the second set of three belongs to the group and the last set of three belongs to others. So let's try and manipulate, for instance, the permissions that pertain to the group. So as you can see, the group has read permissions. They do not have write permissions and they have execute permissions. So let's say we want to give the group write permissions. How do we do that? Remember, the command, let me just clear my screen. The command to change the permissions is ch mod then since we are going to change the permissions of the group it is g remember this notation you change mode then you indicate whether you want to change the permissions of the user the group others or all then now to the symbol so now we are changing the permissions of the group so we change mode g plus then now we go and indicate the permissions we want to give it right permissions is w we want to give it read permissions is R. We want to give it execute permissions is X. But this time around, we want to give that file web projects write permissions, and we are giving the group. We are changing the permissions of the group. Then when I'm done, I bring the file name, as you can see over here. So the file name is web projects. Then I enter. So let me list out the files again in a long format, and let's see what has occurred. As you can see, the directory called web project now has the, the group with write permissions. You can see it right there. Let me change the permissions again. Let me take the right permissions out. How do you do it? You change mode. Let me clear my screen so that we see it properly. You change mode. Then we are changing the permission, permissions of the group. So it's G plus minus. Remember that I'm taking the permissions away. So it's minus. If you want to add permissions, it's plus. So G minus right. I'm taking the right permissions away and I'm doing it for the folder web project. New enter. Now let's just list out in a long format again and see. As you can see, I've taken it, the permissions of the group away, the right permissions of the group away. Let's try it with the user. Let's say we want to take the execute permissions of this user away. What do we do? The command, let me clear my screen. Change mode. We are changing permissions of the user. So U minus X. And the folder we are working with is a web project folder. Let's enter and list out in a long format. As you can see, I've taken the execute permission of the user away. Remember, this first three belongs to the user. What if you want to add the execute permissions of the user back? Let me clear my screen one, one more time. We change mode. Come down so that we see it properly. We change mode. User class X. We, it means that we want the user to be able to execute the file. In the folder we are, the folder, the folder we are dealing with is the web pages. Let me enter and list out in a long format. As you can see, the execute permissions are back. This is a symbolic way of changing file permissions. Now let's talk about one last important one which represents the absolute way of determining permissions. Now to understand the absolute way of declaring permissions, you have to understand a little bit of binary language in mathematics. What do I mean by that? This is what we have already understood. We understand that this is the user. The first set of permissions belongs to the user. The second belongs to the group. And the third belongs to the others. All right. Now we understand that we are dealing with a file here because this is a dash. If this were a D, then we'll be dealing with a folder or a directory. A D means a directory. Let's deal with a file over here. Now, whenever you see this, each bit or each set of permission represents a binary number. In binary, you are only dealing with zeros and ones. I actually have a video on that. You want to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that when I release it, you'll be notified. Now, take note of this. Assuming we have all the set of permissions we failed, so we have the read, write, and execute permissions field. Then we have all the binary numbers field. So it's one, one, one. Assuming we have read and the write is empty and the execute has a number, then we are dealing with the binary notation one, zero, one. Let me get rid of that. Assuming we have the notation, there is no read permission, there is no write permission, but then there is an the execute permission. Then we are dealing with the binary notation zero, zero, one. Let's say we have a set of permissions, there is a read permission, there is no write permission, and there is no execute permission. Then we are dealing with the binary notation 1, 0, 0. Now, assuming we have all permissions, we have the read, write, and execute, then we are dealing with the binary notation 1, 1, 1. Now, let's find out what this means. Let me get rid of this. Now, in decimals, assuming I have the number 1, 2, 3, this is actually 123. Why is this so? Because this is in the place of the 1s. This is in the place of the tens, and this is in the place of the hundreds. So this one over here actually represents hundred. The two over here actually represents twenty, and the three over there represents the one. So it's actually plus three. 
So the reason why this number is 123 is because we are adding 123. Now let's try another. Assuming we had the number 1, 2, 3, 4 in decimals, what are we trying to say here? This actually, the 1 over here actually represents 1000 because it is in a place of a 1000. Then the 2 is in a place of the 100, so it's 200. The 3 is in a place of the 10, so it's 30. And the 4 is in a place of the 1, so it's simply 4. So this number is 1000 plus 200 plus 30 plus 4, and it gives us 1234. This is in decimal. Now, if you watch carefully, you realize that this is actually the notation. The 4 is in a place of the 1 because remember, remember that we are dealing with decimals here before we explain binary. The 10 exponent 0 is 1. Any number exponent 0 is 1, so it is in a place of the 1. Then the 30 is in a place of the 10s because it's 10 exponent 1, which is 10 times 1. The 200 is in a place of the 100s because it's 10 exponent 2, which is 10 times 10, it gives you 100. Then the 1 is in a place of the 1000 because it's 10 times 10 times 10, which gives you 1000. This is how decimals work. How do we translate it to binary? Let's figure that out. If we have the number 111 in binary, what does this mean? In the same way in decimal, the first place represents 10 exponent 0. In binary, the first place represents 2 exponent 0. Now in binary, the first place is 2 exponent 0. Any number exponent 0, like I told you, is 1. So this 1 is in the place of 2 exponent 0, which is 1. So this is simply 1, 1 unit. Now this next one is 2 exponent 1, which means 2 times 1. Which means that the 1 over here is actually the digit 2. So this number in binary, the first 1 over here is simply a 1. The second number 1 over here is 2 exponent 1, which means that it is 2. So it means that we are dealing with 2 plus 1. Then the third one over here represents 2 exponent 2, which is 2 times 2, which equals 4. So it means that we have 4 over here. So 1, 1, 1 in binary is simply 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is equal to 7. Let's try another. Assuming we have this notation in binary, what will it mean? It means that there is nothing in the place of the 1, the 2 exponent 0. So we have 0. Then over here, we are dealing with 2 exponent 1, which is 2. So we have 2. Then over here, we are dealing with 2 exponent 2, which is 2 times 2, 4. So in binary, 1, 1, 0 is 4 plus 2 plus 0 which equals 6. Assuming we have this notation in binary, what will it mean? 1, 0, 0. The 0 is in the place of 2 exponent 0, so it's simply 0. Plus 0. Plus. Now, this 1 is in the place of 2 exponent 2, so it means it's 4. So, 1, 0, 0 in binary is 4 plus 0 plus 0, which equals 4. Now, why am I teaching you this? I'm teaching you this because it applies to shell permissions. As a reminder again, I told you that this represents the permissions for the user, this represents the permissions for the group, and this represents the permissions for others. And each permission in each classification represents a binary number. So assuming we have this set of permissions, then it means that for the user, we have the binary notation 1, 1, 1. Then for the group, we have the binary notation 1, 1, 1. Then for the others, we have the binary notation 1, 1, 1. And remember that, like we learned in binary, 1, 1, 1 means ends up at 7, according to what we learned. Okay, this is 1, 1, 1. It means that we have 1 plus 2. So it's 4 plus 2 plus 1, which ends up at 7. So if we have this set of permissions in the shell means that we are looking at 777. Seven, seven. I hope this makes sense to you because we are going to use it in answering the questions. Let's change the set of permissions and let's see what comes out of that. So let's say the user does not have um, execute permissions, so dash. Then the group does not have read permissions, so let's give them a dash, but they have write and they don't have execute permissions. Others don't have read permissions. Let's say they don't have write permissions, but they have execute permissions. Let's find out in binary notation what this is going to be. So, forget about the first dash over here because it simply represents the file. It means we are dealing with a file here and not a directory. So, in binary, this is going to be 1, 1, 0. That's for the user. Then, for the group, we are going to have 0, 1, 0. For others, we are going to have 0, 0, 1. Let's delete this. Let's convert this into decimals. 
Now, like I told you, in binary, the first represents 2 exponent 0. So for others, we have 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is simply 1. Then for the group, we have this is 0. This is in the place of 2 exponent 1, which is 2. And then this is 0. So we have 0 plus 2 plus 0, which means that over here, it is 2. Then for the user, we have 1, 1, 0. This is in the place of 2 exponent 0. And this is in the place of 2 exponent 1, which is 2. And this is in the place of 2 exponent 2, which is 4. So we have 4 plus 1 plus, sorry, 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is 6. So this gives us 6. So the permission, absolute permission for this notation you see over here is 6, 2, 1. The absolute permission you see over here is 6, 2, 1. So having understood this, let's go into the terminal again and let's see if we can make sense of the things we see over there. Let's pick a set of permissions and see if we can determine the kinds of permission that we are dealing with. Let me pick any random one. I'll go for P2 over here. As you can see, the permissions, the permission set for this folder, it's a folder because it starts with a D, is this. So I'm going to copy it and I'll take it to my notes and then we are going to crack it and see what we can do. Amazing. So I've copied the permission set on my terminal and I've brought it here. Let's try and see if you can figure this out. So let's divide them as I've already taught you. This is for the user, this is for the group, and this is for the others. So for the user, we have the binary set 1, 1, 1. For the group, we have the binary set 1, 0, 1. For others, we have the binary set 1, 0, 1. It means that for the group and others, they do not have write permissions, but they have read and execute permissions. I'm sure by now you understand it very well. Let's convert this binary notation to decimals. So this is in 2 exponent 0, which is in a 1's place, so this is 1. Then 2 exponent 2, 1. Then this is 2 exponent 2, which is 4. So over here, we are dealing with 4 plus 0 plus 1. So this is 5. Then we come to the group. This is 4 plus 0 plus 1. So this is 5. Then we come to the user. This is 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. So the absolute permission for this file you see over here is 7, 7, 7, 5, 5. Guys, it's as simple as that. Having understood this, let's go back and answer the question.